Hey, Greens YouTube. I have here a Concept One. Uh, now, you've seen me do Concept Ones before. I'm a big fan of them, um, but never in 4K, and that was like a 40 minute long video. So we're gonna go over the basic service. We're not actually gonna get into the cord rewind section in this video. Um, I have another video where I do cover that in deep depth if you need. This is a non-self-propelled version, but of course, since it's performance reviews, and I like my vacuums, I got a self-propelled version, and whether or not they have a light or two or one pedals is really dependent, but you can see the self-propelled there. And self-propelled versions will also have two belts, so make sure you change those accordingly. Let's start stripping it uh, down. Yeah, you can see where the self-propel would be. So I'm gonna pull, just start pulling it apart. Um, so you know, this was a thrift store find. I'm sure nobody's serviced this in years. So it desperately needs a bit of TLC. Now these bristles are good, which is amazing because they don't make these anymore. So if you are out bristles, uh, shit, you should have had a luck. I'm sorry about that, folks. I just wanted to add this in here because uh, I'm doing two of these at once. You can see if those brushes aren't going to touch. That's what they should look like. So this is a model right here. Yeah, you can see. And unfortunately, these are no longer available, so that means there's not much I can do. Uh, Hoover doesn't make them. They stopped making most of these parts under Maytag. For those who don't know, uh, Maytag sold the, co the company in the mid-2000s. So, yeah. Uh, and then this was basically the golden joy of Hoover and perhaps one of the better cleaning uprights that's ever existed. You know, usually I favor canisters, but I do really like the Concept One. Uh, so it's kind of brief history on that. I'm just gonna pull that apart. I believe that's everything. I got one screw just kind of hanging on for dear life over here. Um, so you can unclog it yourself. You know, you can get to the belt. This is the, you know, back in the days when things were meant to be maintained and cleaned. All right, so that's been pulled apart and the machine looks less menacing like this, but is still full of dirt. Yucko. And that just comes apart like so. Now, I am probably gonna go further than most people would go on this. And I'm not say, gonna say I'm gonna do a full restore on this, but we are gonna do a bit more than the average Joe on here. So this, once you do that, you tilt this off and everything just comes apart and uh, get a hold of, I already took care of the spring on this side, but careful the springs. So all that is nasty and needs to be washed. So you can just see how nasty these things got with uh, very little. Oh, also these headlights get super nasty. Let's clean this one up. I'll show you how that looks. Gross, gross, gross. I have not turned this one on yet, uh, other than in the store. And now we can check, make sure the blade of the fan is good, which this one is. This is excellent. So now we're kind of stuck with the body of the machine. All right, sorry folks, I needed a mask. Sometimes we need a respirator when we're doing this. So the next step is let's just dust the machine real quick with another vacuum. All right, so now that I've done that, and you'll have to excuse me, I'm gonna wear the mask. Uh, I've got ventilation going in this room, but you're gonna see how, really just how bad dust was on some of these machines back then. Uh, this is really before double layer filtration really took off with a lot of manufacturers, particularly Hoover was a holdout on that. Uh, it's funny as, you know, Kirby had the cloth bag for too long, Hoover had, one layer of paper bags for way too long. I mean, they had the technology. So that was one of the improvements under Maytag we saw, uh, that those became a little bit more standard. Still not great. Uh, all right, so this is gonna pull out, and I thought there would be a quick disconnect in here, actually. Uh, there usually is. Huh. All right, so I'm just pulling this out so the machine is a little easier to manipulate. Um, and next we got 
try and put it where the camera can see. There's two screws right there. So we got all the screws out. Now this thing should just pop up. And yeah, we have access to a lot more stuff here. You can see where a cord rewind would have gone. And we're gonna get the bag off and then the bag is gonna just get washed. Uh, basically that's the only thing we can do now at this point. Uh, the bag had some trouble, is having some trouble coming off because this is stuck in the tabs. There's these big tabs for this and yep, there's that one. There you go. Uh, so yeah, you can see all the dirt that was basically holding those tabs in place right there. All right, so I've taken the machine further apart. It's just some Eclipse to get off that. Uh, and this is back in the time where uh, metal tape was part of the construction. Hoover did this for a long time actually. Uh, but there's a, you can see it's leaking. That tape is leaking. So the tape is no good. I have to take the tape off and clean that out unfortunately. You can see where the motor is. Uh, you can see the bearings and stuff. So I'm going to actually end up cleaning this out as well. I was not planning on going this far into this unit. But considering the kit, looking at the condition of everything, it seems to be necessary, unfortunately. Um, I don't want to pull this. Oh, actually, this is okay. Pull that. So, say this. The quarter is contained. I can pull that out. Uh, again, just to show you what's in there and just kind of how nasty these get. Uh, great machines. I love these machines. They do need to be a good thorough cleaning. Uh, oh, uh, you can just see everywhere. Again, this is from not putting the bag right on right and then having cheap bags. Yeah, it's, it's really pretty bad. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and clean that out. All right, so I've serviced the motor. It's been re-lubricated, washed. There's silicone plus the tape that it originally would have had holding it back together. Everything is good to go. With that, I didn't wash or take apart the cord reel any further. I didn't really see it necessary. However, it, it can be a good idea to do this, uh, depending on the age and the status of the cord reel. I will, of course, give the cord reel uh, just a little bit of oil, and that, that, that will help it out. All right, after a little bit of a struggle here, um, I actually had to rotate the motor case around uh, so the wires were all pointing in the same direction. As you see, I, I did this without undoing any of the original factory wires. Um, I also pulled another like half inch down from this and uh, to give me a little bit more room there. Now, as you can see, this dot lines up with this dot and don't pitch your carbon brush wire in there. But everything else should just go back together. Um, and there's plenty of room to work with in here once you do that. All right, so now I can see the motor is where it should be, and then these rings, they go on one way or the other. Uh, yeah, they're gonna go on like that for you, and that those rings are what this machine rotates on. So that's how those go, and then there are going to be some very large screws. You're gonna notice there's only three. The fourth one goes through the other side by the light uh, bracket. Um, it's kind of weird. Like I said, I didn't put the main body uh, in the dishwasher like I usually do. So we're just gonna give it one more wipe down. There's not really any dust that should collect here uh, other than what you see. So now your big screw right here. Uh, and these screws, uh, they have a different head than the other ones. Going to do this. Um, you can put some oil on here. That really helps much. Uh, this actually went in the dishwasher, this piece right here. And you're gonna see this is all, this covers the wires. This basically rocks in here. It's a wire cover, that's its job. 
Um, and then once this is in, again, your, your shorter screws right here are going to go in this thing and hold it in place. And then this goes on later. And these screws are actually sandwiching going all the way through to the front cover uh, over here, which is kind of cool. All right, this part is so from a different time, so I'm gonna show you what we did here. So the spring goes here and the caddy with the Teflon gaskets all go in there. It might not be actually Teflon, but there's some sort of soft something. You can give them grease. I like to give this guy a little love. Um, you can see how that springs that down and then that mechanism works like that. Now, some of these actually had two pedals this one just has one being a budget model. You can see where the spring is on the other side and how all this goes. You can also see where the self-propelled would have been. So that's how all of that goes back together. Again, very strange. Uh, typical of the time, but not, not like anything we would construct today. The other thing is I like to wash this piece. Uh, you can give him grease. I'm not sure it's necessary. Uh, but he goes... He goes in there, maybe. Yeah, there, like that. And he connects right there. Uh, and there's like a gasket around here. Mine is kind of melted off. That's pretty normal. Uh, but the idea was the customer could check that out. So that's what all that does right there in terms of how the chassis goes back together there. And the other thing I wanna show, we're now gonna put the height adjustment together. And the height adjustment, again, is just this rubbing on this wheel. Uh, shag being the highest. Whatever. Anyways, this just kind of uh, rotates on here like so. Uh, and then there's, you can see there's four screws where that attaches right there. I want to show this going on. Now, if you haven't seen any of my other videos on a Hoover before, Hoover did not use sealed bearings on anything uh, until they were sold for the second time to the Chinese who actually made vast improvements to their machines uh, versus a Maytag. But anyways, I have a pretty new looking roller. This was replaced at some time. Would have been one of the last ones available because they have been discontinued uh, for at least uh, 20, 25 years at this point. So um, I did put through the dishwasher and try to wash it and I even wire wheeled it and I can't get the, the blackness off that. So that is unfortunately permanent. So I'm just gonna go through and rebuild these bearings. I think they were trying to, to make it so that you had to bring it in to change the brush roller out. I think that was like, part of their long-term expendable goals. That's the only reason I could see why they would do this for so long. Cause sealed bearings had been a thing, you know, pretty standard on equipment, you know, anything past the 1960s. All right, for some reason the camera shut off there, but what you missed me doing was putting the belt on the brush roller. And I was letting you know that there's a hole here and you can feel the brush roller. Just show you what that looks like right there. That just, these are very easy to do. They just rock on like that. All right, so now we got everything here. So now I got all of this put together and you'll see which way that goes. Okay, so you now know. All this gets basically clipped into here. You can see that's what holds it in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Now, once this is together like this, you can see that this is just like clamped on here with this, this thing 
like so. That just clamps on there, and then this will go in like that. But first, I want to do this, because it had this wonderful vintage thing with the slider for smell goods. That goes in, and then we have, haha, <laughs> the uh, spring isn't in the best condition, oh well. There we go. That all. Now, we get to put this upright, and we'll put this on. Uh, but let's put a HEPA bag in there, and yeah, they make HEPA A bags still. You can get them, both third party and genuine. Again, I'll put a link below to those. Highly recommend that you run them. They give you more airflow and better filtration. I don't think this machine was actually used all that much. Really, because like, you see that this is still intact and stuff. Oops. Um, so I got this half off at a thrift store. What's the car search? All right. motors always had kind of a weird sound to them. Now, if you're not familiar with the Concept One or you really haven't used one of these, these are one of the more powerful direct air uprights that were made. You know, this will spank something like a Kirby or a Royal uh, just about any day of the week. So, even though this is a, you know, not a premium model, uh, it's still a really, they're really nice machines. Um, I once gave one of these to one of my neighbors who needed a vacuum because it's just, good and they, they're cheap you know they're not really desirable for a lot of people people don't they don't have attachments this isn't going to clean your hard floor at all <laughs> that's not what this machine does but if you just need to clean your carpets it's kind of hard to beat uh, i mean yeah there are lighter more powerful vacuums now but it is a pretty powerful vacuum for an upright uh, and it breaks a lot of the upright rules because it was originally designed to be a premium product, not the budget product that uprights usually are a uh, product of. So that's why this machine is built like that. It was also built and engineered in the U.S. So a bit of American pride went into this when that mattered. Um, well, I guess it still matters, but it used to be more common. So thanks for watching, folks. Give this video a thumbs up. Uh, definitely subscribe if you're not already subscribed and have yourself a great day.